We do the opposite in all of our institutions. The family, we have this wonderful new medium of human communications that can open up bandwidth. So what do we do? We mistrust kids. We stick the computer in the, in the living room where we can spy on our 14-year-old boy, make sure he's not into inappropriate uh, places, and we put blocking software on his computer. Well, hello, did anyone notice he's also got a computer in his pocket? And he'll see a dozen other computers through the day. And any 14-year-old boy can hack blocking software. If you don't like porn, job number one is to talk to your kid about porn. We do the opposite of what we should do. And that's going to be a theme for the rest of my talk. And the biggest issue I'm very concerned about it is privacy. If you have a teenager, go home, sit with them on Facebook right now, get them to fix their privacy controls, because chances are they're giving away way too much personal information. And I'm convinced that there are thousands of young people in the world this year who will not get that dream job because some employer, after saying, yep, you got the job, did the reference check and found that they were on Facebook doing something inappropriate or wearing something or saying something or at a party or whatever, underage drinking, whatever, that you might do when you're a 17-year-old that's not really you. So there are real concerns, but they're not the concerns that everybody raises. So let's close this part. Why do we have all this negative stuff if there's no data to support it? Well, I think we fear what we don't understand. We've always been uneasy about young people. If you read Growing, Grown Up Digital, you'll find that Aristotle's critique of youth back then is pretty similar. You know, they're lazy, they're rude, they don't pay attention to their parents, they don't work hard, they don't listen. You combine that, children are to be seen and not heard, youth is wasted on the young, it's part of our culture. You combine that with the fact that the young people know more about the biggest innovation changing every institution in society than their teachers, than their parents, in the workforce, than their employers, and you have a formula for fear. There's a little vignette. I, this was at the World Congress on in Information Technology. I gave a speech. I chaired this panel. There were like 6,000 people in the room. It was the highest rated session of over 100 out of the mouths of babes. On the left there is Rahash, Rahaf Harfouche, born in Syria, was studying in Paris, and uh, her boyfriend's in Toronto, so they turn on video Skype all day long to keep their relationship going. They cook together across the Atlantic Ocean. So I asked her, Rahaf, your generation, do you use email? And she said, oh, no, Mr. Topscott, email, that's like yesterday's technology. And I said, well, if you did use email, what would you use it for? She says, email? That's kind of like a formal technology, say, for sending a thank you letter to one of your friend's parents. That would be a good use of email. One of the reasons these panels are received so well is I socked it to the kids. I said to her, so Rahaf, aren't you part of the dumbest generation? I'll bet you don't read the newspaper. And um, yeah, I'll bet you don't watch evening news. I'll bet you watch The Daily Show. You get your news from Jon Stewart in The Daily Show on Comedy Central. Are we lost because of you? And uh, she, she says, well, I don't think that's a fair stereotype of my generation. I think we're pretty well reformed. She says, putting it back to me, it's true, I don't read the newspaper, but Mr. Topscott, have you ever seen one of those things? They come out once a day, and they don't have hot links, and they're not multimedia, and you get this weird black stuff on your fingers. She said, I get my news through RSS feeds. I have about 60 of them. I like to triangulate the news and form my own opinions on things. She says, I don't watch the TV news, but does anybody? Sam Donaldson said to me, the average age of the ABC Nightly News is 61 years old. It's dead, he says. She says, it's true, I watch The Daily Show and Jon Stewart on Comedy Central, but not to get the news. The Daily Show isn't funny unless you know the news. <laughs>